Into an insight program for this Friday morning. It is the uh, what second day of April 2021. Mike Warren with you on the insight program today. Normally, this is a day set aside for the monthly appearance of the Marshfield mayor. Well, all things considered, um, we don't really have a mayor right now in the city of Marshfield, so. I guess the next best thing is a city administrator. We went and found one of those uh, for the program today. Steve Barg is the city administrator for the city of Marshfield. Steve, welcome to the Insight program. Good to be here, Mike. When you were talking about the weather a minute ago, I thought about Wednesday morning when I was walking my dog. It was 17 degrees, <laughs> but uh, you know the forecast was for upper 60s by Sunday, and I thought, this is Wisconsin, right? Yeah. Wait around, it'll change you bet. Uh, in a matter of moments. Um, and you know, next Friday we'll have eight inches of snow. <laughs> Who knows? I hope not, but welcome to the Insight program. Good to be here. I is this a first? It's a first for me to be in this studio. Uh, I've never been here before. I've seen it many times before, you know, uh, on the replays of this program and never set foot in here before. Wow. And yeah. you've been around for a decade? I have. I started in January of 2011. So it's been uh, tw 10 years and a couple months that I've never been. I feel really bad about that, that I've not set foot in this room before. Yeah, shame on you. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, well, <laughs> and I think I'm going to file a complaint, and there are going to be hearings to get rid of you. Well, so. let's let's yeah. go down that road. <laughs> I, I do hope to spend a little more time here, though. Uh, it's uh, yeah. it's it's very comfortable. I like this room. Well, thank you for coming in um, during a, a a time in which you know, uh, in which obviously the the big story is you're here for a reason. Normally, this is a show set aside to have the mayor on uh, once a month. And uh, the recent hearings uh, held by the Common Council and then the subsequent vote 8 to 2 to remove Bob McManus from the mayor's office. Um, uh, and so that vote coming down. Um, so uh, I guess just update um, the citizens of Marshfield on what is the situation with the mayor's office as it stands right now? Well, currently, uh, the council president, Tom Witzel, is is taking on duties that the mayor would normally handle. And I'm very careful to say not acting mayor position. He wants it understood that he's only doing limited duties to make sure that we can meet all the federal and state and city requirements. For example, he'll be running the council meetings he did the other night on uh, March 30th. He'll also be signing official documents. But he won't be doing the full depth and breadth of what a, a mayor would normally do. He's really kind of trying to keep the ship floating forward, if you will, rather than taking on any new initiatives. Uh, he'll be doing that until a permanent decision is made. So officially, we do not have a mayor in the city of Marshfield? We do not. We have a council president. And like I said, uh, very carefully, we're not even saying the phrase acting mayor at this point. Uh, although there may be official documents like there were the other night related to the borrowing of uh, monies for street projects and other things that had the phrase acting mayor on it because the bond council required that. But otherwise, he will be the council president uh, performing the required duties of the mayor when necessary. And like I said, those are fairly limited. Most of the job of mayor is not formally set forward by state statute. It's uh, it, There's a lot of informal type of things that go on in terms of uh, that person's uh, level of influence. But he will be doing the required signings and uh, and those types of things. Okay. Uh, and so what about the position of mayor? Um, you know, the council votes 8 to 2 to uh, remove the mayor from office, um, and and Bob McManus was removed with a little over a year left on his current term. Um, that term expires in April of next year. Right. And um, so where to in terms of that, that office? In the meantime, obviously, there will be somebody elected next April. Correct. Um, uh, what about the remainder of that term? You know, Mike, when I first came into city government, I thought this would all be prescribed by state law and city code, and amazingly, it's not. Um, you know, really, the council has a lot of discretion on what they want to do moving forward. Now, we all realize that if a member of the council, let's say, resigned with 
four months left on his or her term. Well, you're not going to go into much of a process to fill a four-month vacancy. By the time you pick somebody, it's going to be time to vote for somebody else. But there's no threshold in state law or city code that says if it's more than nine months or if it's m more than a year or whatever, it doesn't say that. The longer the portion of somebody's term remains, the more likely you're going to look at maybe something like a special election. Uh, in this case, we're kind of on that fringe. It's going to be you know one year left as of um, right now, really, in April. Uh, they could look at one of three things. They could either have a special election, could talk about that. They could um, take applications, per se, and uh, letters of interest, resumes, that kind of thing, and uh, select somebody to finish out uh, Bob McManus's term. Or they could allow the council president to do it, what he's doing right now and fill out the remainder of the time just simply doing the required duties. You can literally go without a, quote, mayor, uh, unquote, for an extended period of time. Those will be the options. And of course, you know, you look at things like, okay, cost. Well, there's a cost to doing a special election. How much is that? How long would it take before we could have it? It'd probably be sometime in the summer. So, you know, what you do is you weigh all the different aspects of your choices and then decide what, what you want to do. And uh, the council has not had this conversation yet. They only had eight members at the last meeting and they, you know, definitely didn't want to have it with two people gone. Uh, that's an important thing to talk about. So I suspect that you'll be hearing that conversation fairly soon. Hmm. No no timeline as to when this process might take its next step forward then. Well, yeah, I, I, we haven't started working on the agenda for the April 13th council meeting. Uh, and, you know, I don't know if there's people who are going to be absent or whatever, but I, I suspect they'll want to at least have the conversation and start working on how they want to do it, deal with this. Um, it, it, that's an important issue. People are wondering. People call and say, where's the mayor? And certainly we, the council president is happy to help them. But we want to have some area, some idea of where this is likely to go. Yeah. In Marshfield, we have this weak mayor, strong council set up uh, with a city administrator, yourself. Kind of explain that and how city government works in Marshfield and, and what role that mayor does play in, in really not, you know, some cities the mayor is it. He or she is the day-to-day -day manager and, you know, really runs the city. Uh, Wisconsin Rapids, for instance, has that kind of a setup. No city manager or administrator per se. The mayor is it. Uh, Marshfield's a little different, uh, right? Yeah, I spent 13 years in Ripon before I came here, and Ripon's over in eastern Wisconsin, over by Oshkosh. And over there, most communities have a city administrator or city manager. So when I came here, I was surprised to find out that Stevens Point, Wisconsin Rapids, and Wausau, all three, the biggest communities around us, all have full-time mayors, mm -hmm. and nobody doing what I do. Um, that's a very different setup. Here, when you have the mayor administrator or mayor manager form of government, and there's a slight difference between administrator and manager in terms of the, the level of authority that a person in my position would have, but when you have that type of government, it's usually as a part-time mayor and a full-time administrator. The part-time mayor is responsible for running the meetings, has other duties and responsibilities, but it's not a full-time job, so they depend upon someone in my shoes to handle the day-to-day -day operations of the city. It's a different kind of uh, arrangement. Yeah, and, and so the mayor's role here in Marshfield is is what? Uh, I mean, I've heard him called CEO of the city, uh, I guess technically, is that correct? Well, he's certainly the, the chief elected official, and those those okay. initials are CEO as well. Yeah, I'm sure. You know, sometimes people think about it in, in the corporate world, and that's a little different thing okay. when you think about the CEO of a company. Because, you know, in city government, you, you know, you have a, a person in the mayor's position, but you also have a council, you have uh, a city administrator, a city attorney. Uh, there's a lot of players involved, but it's a critical position, you know, and as we look ahead to the next one being chosen, either soon to fill up uh, Bob McManus's term or looking forward to 2022, that's a key position. And a lot of it's more informal than formal. You know, if you look in state law and you say, what are all the authorities that the mayor has? You've seen some of them, the veto power, it's been executed here in my 10 years a few times. What that does is it forces the council to have a, a larger majority to override his or her veto. But a lot of the, the authority and the position of the mayor is more informal in terms of being that leader to pull people together, try and get some consensus going, um, and, and handle some key things that come up, certainly. I'm not trying to minimize the, uh, I mean, he's got in terms of emergency management and other areas, he's got some, some role. Yeah. But, but, you know, it's not as much formal as it is informal in terms of being that community and uh, civic leader. Well, I think of, like, the plan commission. Yep. 
if we have a plan commission, isn't it a kind of a state, isn't it a state law or something, or a state statute that the mayor has to chair the plan commission? Yeah, and, and we are going to go without a, uh, we're not going to go without a chair because the vice chair is going to run the meetings now for a little okay. while. But you are right. The mayor is by statute is the, I believe, is the head of the plan commission, the, the, the chair. And that, that's an important role. I'm probably forgetting others. Right. And please understand, I'm not trying to diminish the formal role of the mayor. Uh, the mayor has some important formal authorities, but all in all, as opposed to the, the Wausau, Stevens Point, you know, Rapids model, it, it's not quite that type of thing. It's not the person who is directly overseeing the operations of the city on a, a regular day-to-day -day basis. Okay, so uh, again, there could be a change. We, we, we just don't know how, how soon or what I, again, this is up to the Common Council now, right? It is, and they really have no guidelines for it. They, they have options, and uh, I think I just laid out the three main ones for you, and uh, you know they can you know, decide what's best, look at the pros and cons, and decide which way they want to go. We're in a difficult environment right now. There are certainly uh, some, um, you know, some people who felt that the mayor uh, should not have been removed, and so you know, all that kind of factors into how they want to move forward and, and what their best decision is to be uh, leaders of the community right now. I mean, just what a time. All at once, we have a lot happening. Um, you know, we see uh, a police chief you know, facing criminal charges and then resigning his position with the police department all at the same time. You know, the council removing the mayor. We've got, oh, I mean, yeah. complaints being filed, open records requests uh, galore, as I understand, um, and that's not an easy thing either i mean right i mean how what kind of effect has this had on city hall and just the day-to-day -day operation of city government do you guys get anything done besides handling complaints and open records requests well i know that that's a lot of my world i can tell you that as far as the broader city employees in general i mean i think that the issues with the mayor and the police chief you know, when they come to work every morning at 7.30, it's not like they can't do their jobs. It's not like they sit at their desk and they're frozen in time. But it's been kind of like a cloud hanging over everybody for a long time. And people wanted to see resolution of some type so that we can move forward. Because, you know, when I talk to you, when I talk to other local media, when I talk to people in Wausau, I've heard from Channel 7 and Channel 9, I don't want it to be about the mayor being possibly removed from office. I don't want it to be about the police chief facing criminal charges. I want it to be about bringing new businesses to town or, or improving uh, the downtown area or maybe getting more housing in our community. And, and hopefully these two issues, you know, behind us, you know, no matter what people think, good, bad, or otherwise, allows us to, to begin to spend more time on those topics and be able to um, discuss those with the media instead of the things we've talked about in the past 12 months or so. Well, and we want to get to some of that on on the show, but I, I'm just you know handling the the the, the topic of, of the year here, you know, obviously is the situation with the mayor. But this is, I mean, you've been in city government forever. Yeah, you know, uh, thirty yeah. years. Yeah, more than thirty years. Actually. More than thirty. Yeah, twenty um, twenty six as an administrator and a few more in uh, a planning department in the Twin Cities. And that's your background, yep. kind of a planner. Correct. And then got into administration. Um, and have been doing that for ten over ten years here, as we yep. said. Yep. Um, this is just this is unprecedented. You have, have you ever uh -huh. seen something like this in your time in city government? Not even close, Mike. If you think back to the pandemic, which broke about this time last year, you know, in in March, and then and going through the issues we've dealt with, uh, you know, we've got the issue with a, a police officer who was released, and uh, the police chief and the mayor we've been talking about, uh, you know, and we've had a budget structural budget deficit. We had the largest tax increase I've ever been part of passing anywhere I've worked. And uh, I think thankfully, that hopefully the public understands that we're trying to get ourselves to a better place uh, based upon some things that maybe weren't handled perfectly. Um, but these are, these are things that even any one of them you know, gives you heartburn. Yeah. You put them all together, and, and it's been a, it's been a stressful time that I can't remember anything even close in my 26 years as a city administrator. You know, and here's the other thing I was looking at. This is all costing us money, and a lot of money, right? What is the financial impact of all these hearings, complaints, special council meetings? I think we've had a council meeting every week this year so far. I've looked yeah. in the calendar, yeah. except maybe the first, you know, early on in the year. Otherwise, I think we've had a, a regular meeting or a special meeting every week of the year so far, and that takes money. And, 
and to to do complaints and legal fees and to hire a guy like Jim Cowley to come in and run a, a two night hearing. Uh, that takes money. Um, city attorney's fees, you're consulting him every five minutes on something. What has been the financial impact of this? Has, have you added it up? Well, let me start with the good news, if that's okay. okay. I like okay. to do that. I'm a, right. I'm a, I'm a glass half full person. Uh, the money we spent in terms of the pandemic response has almost entirely been reimbursed by the, the CARES program. Hmm. Uh, the city has received 300000 plus for monies that we spent on everything from cleaning supplies to plexiglass for the elections to whatever and uh, yeah, and that's good news that's good news I, I really applaud that program it helped municipalities deal with a problem that was overwhelming but in terms of what you're talking about with legal fees and and those types of things it's been a killer i'm not gonna i'm not gonna lie we've engaged our, our um, labor law attorneys greatly with respect to the matter with the police chief and of course you mentioned uh, Jim County an attorney from the Fox Valley uh, leading us through the, the hearing process with the mayor um, the the, uh, the attorney fees you don't plan for when you do the budget you don't say well we're gonna spend you know, tens of thousands of dollars on attorney fees we don't normally do that here so um, I mean it's come out of our general fund uh, reserves and um, we had a good year last year otherwise because the the number of snow plowing incidents was lower than normal by quite a bit but um, these offsetting legal fees are a killer what is it what is the number well, I, I guess I'd, I'd have to put it all together. We don't have the final bills yet from Mr. Calney, uh, but I, I think if you put everything together we, that we just discussed, we're talking about a quarter million. Wow. And that's, again, not budgeted. So, well, but it's I mean, not. Do, we, it, it is sort budget, of budgeted. We budgeted a little bit more this year because yeah. we knew we were going to have some. In 2020, it was just a total surprise to us yeah. all the costs we incurred, in, and that wasn't budgeted at all. Right. And so it is budgeted in the form of a contingency fund. Sort of a rainy day thing, right? Or, or uh, kind of a just-in-case fund? Well, yeah, we have a contingency fund. Also increasing the legal expense bill in the budget by itself. Oh. Normally, we, normally, we don't spend a lot of money on outside legal services beyond the city attorney. We use them for, like, contract talks with the police and fire um, unions and stuff like that. But uh, we've blown through that. Mm -hmm. you know, in 2020, we just blasted through that. We increased it a bit for 2021 because we knew we would have some fallout continuing from these cases, but it's been overall very hard to deal with. Yeah, I yeah, had no idea this this was all coming. No. Um, and, wow. So budget impact, that that's one thing. The other thing I think about is how will this impact people outside Marshfield must be looking at what's going on and, and then just shaking their heads going, what is going on in Marshfield, Wisconsin? And how is this going to hurt our recruitment? Uh, for housing for can you hire a city employee can you I, I don't know that we're doing a lot of hiring but has have you felt any impacts in those re regards in terms of recruitment efforts for the city of Marshfield who wants to come and work for a city that's getting rid of the mayor and the police chief and complaints and open records requests uh, uh, on top of you know one after the other and all this other stuff going on and uh, getting rid of a police officer because he couldn't run fast enough for fitness test whatever it was there's a lot happening here in this city that is a negative impact to recruitment well that's true and, and that's why i was talking about the lost hot tv stations before even just in central wisconsin when when the stories that they hear on the air are about Marshfield, it's about the police chief and the, and the mayor, and when they hear other communities in the area, it's about, oh great, this new company's coming here, this new restaurant is coming here. Mm -hmm. it, it does put us in a, in a negative light. Uh, you know, I, I think we're probably not seeing a whole lot of problems yet in terms of recruitment, but I, I think um, it, it does hurt, especially if you have to move. You know, if you're looking at taking a position that you're going to move here from Milwaukee, you might say, wait a minute, this, this city sounds a little bit unstable here. Uh, as opposed to if you're currently living in, in Stratford or, or someplace nearby. The other issue I think we're going to deal with, though, is, is people trying to get people to be on council and be on commissions and committees because, uh, you know, th these have been fairly public things. And there, there's some people who um, have been getting some negative comments because of it on, on commissions and, and council. Uh, people who serve and they want to serve for the public good, um, we want them to feel that they're making a difference and we want them to not feel like they're under the gun. So what I hope to do in the next few months is build into people that look, what you do matters, it's important, we're in a rough time right now, there's been a lot of tension, but we'd love you to consider public service. And we need those people to keep coming forward, Mike. Yeah, we do, we, because we got a city to run here. We do. Um, and, and it's that time of the year. Yeah. 
right? With There is an election next week. The spring election is all about the local government. And so what do we have coming up there, and what are the impacts? Because the mayor now would normally be, you know, naming uh, yeah. people to those committees and that. Um, how's that process going to look now this year without a full-time mayor? Well, I've talked to the council president, Tom Witzel, and he, he is comfortable with a part of the process. Uh, he's comfortable with the fact that if, if people have been on before and their term is up and they want to continue, you know, he'll likely reappoint them. But one of the things that I know mayors have done, Chris Meyer used to talk to me about this a lot, is literally have to go out and find people to serve on these committees and, and boards. And uh, the council president is not going to be doing that. He doesn't feel that in his role right now in a limited term, temporary capacity, it, uh, it ought to be his call to find people for these important positions. So there may be some vacancies that stand for a while in terms of some of our boards, committees, and commissions, uh, just because he doesn't feel like it's his his purview to make those you know, decisions. But some others will move forward to continue to keep people on the boards that they've been serving on. Yeah, and that'll be tough, like you said, because with this atmosphere that we've created now, um, who wants to do that? Because, boy, you make the wrong decision, according to some. And they'll just get rid of you if they don't like you. Yeah, especially people who are not even, you know, getting paid. And, and yeah. I, I don't mean to separate council too much because yeah. council's not getting rich on this. We have some great council members, and they, they work their hearts out to do the best for the people, and they get $375 a month, I think. Well, they're not planning their retirement based upon their council pay. But especially if you're on a committee or board or commission, and it's volunteer, you're not getting a penny, and you find yourself in the public spotlight, you know, that's a difficult thing. That might make you or even your spouse look at you and say, boy, that's, you still want to continue because, you know, you, you went into this to be doing good things and, and not to be talked about at council meetings and other places in ways that uh, are difficult. So we hope to continue to get people to come forward. Marshfield has been very good historically, Mike, in, in getting people to serve on these committees. People volunteer. They send emails and, and resumes from time to time. We hope that continues. Hope so. All right, Steve Barg, the city administrator, in lieu of the mayor on the monthly slot reserved for the mayor here on the Insight Program, uh, 1026. And stay with us. We've got more of our Insight Program after this. If any of you would like to join a club so you can learn more about how to take pictures, have an opportunity to exhibit your pictures, the Focal Point Camera Club is an example of a nearby club which meets in Junction City, which is near Stevens Point. They meet from September through May. And in the summertime, we have outings. So if you're interested, check the internet, focalpointcameraclub.org. It's the Insight Program on a Friday, and good Friday, April 2nd, 2021. Mike Warren with you today on the uh, Insight Program. Our city administrator, Steve Barg, is with us on the program today in lieu of the mayor. This is the time slot we set aside for the monthly, uh, the, uh, monthly appearance uh, by the Marshfield mayor. We don't have one uh, right now, and so city administrator Steve Barg, kind enough to uh, come on the program and... Uh, I guess, fill the shoes of uh, the mayor, um, who did a good job. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, we'll just address that. Uh, Bob McManus is no longer uh, the mayor in the city of Marshfield. Um, after, what, three years? Yeah, it would have been three years here in the next couple of weeks. And, and you know, I, I know there's a lot of different feelings out there in the community right now, people struggling, in, or some, some agree, some don't agree with what happened. Uh, but I just want to give uh, Bob a little kudos. During his three years, he was part of some important things. Uh, most recently, the, the COVID-19 response, which he took a major role in. And uh, one of the big things he did is he worked with Josh Miller to really push forward the idea of, of small business grants to help some of those entities when they were closed down to be able to pay their, their rent and their utilities just to make it through that first wave. Uh, that was great. But he's been part of getting Van de Hay Waters off the ground, uh, supported closing HEFCO last year early so that we could get construction moving for that great improvement that's going to open here in a couple months, uh, help us deal with some of the tough budget challenges we had, what we had to work through with that TIF transfer thing. And and uh, so, I mean, I just I, I want to say thanks to him for the, the, the good things that he was able to be part of and to accomplish during his term. Yeah, and 
you know, maybe just for a clarification, so I was wondering, too, maybe people out there are wondering, so, okay, so with these hearings, he was accused of, what, deleting text messages that he shouldn't have? Yeah, in part, right. That was part of the issue? Right. That were supposed to be part of what, like an open records request or something? Right, there'd been an open records request made that involved um, records that he had. Okay, so he right. was, okay. Because yeah. people are probably wondering, um, so he deleted text messages, big deal. What, what is the, what is the big deal, or what is the issue there? If you know that was what he was alleged to have done, I guess he did, right? I, I guess he yeah, did. I, you know, it's, it's awkward for me having been actually a witness in this in this matter at the hearing. You know, I, I really don't want to go into it too much, but okay. yeah, the, the 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 question was whether or not he was truthful through the process in terms of providing the records that were required of him of him under state law by okay. this request. Um, and uh, you know, ultimately, the council decided that that he wasn't truthful, and that he, you know, uh, blamed others along the way okay. in not providing the records that were asked of him. And the signi significance of that is he was supposed to maintain those records regardless of whether they were going to be asked for or not. Right. Yeah. M officials in his position are required to to maintain those records, uh, and the city had the email records, but we didn't have text messages. Uh, we we now are archiving them. Uh, at City Hall, uh, but we weren't at the time, okay. and uh, so yeah. The, the question was: Was he was he owning up to his responsibility under state law to provide those? And uh, you know, I, like I said, I was a, a key player in that, so I, I don't know that I want to go much farther on it. Yeah. But uh, you know, he he wasn't submitting them, and uh, that's what came about in the discussion. Okay, grab the headphones. There, we've got a call coming into the program. Okay. That's going to be the only way you can. Yep. Hear them. Hopefully, they're yeah, untangled here a little bit. Yeah, they're a little tangled right. up. Okay. Uh, let's. Hopefully, I'm doing this right. Hello. Oh, they hung up. Good morning. You're on Insight. Yeah, this is Joanne calling. I have a stupid question to ask. Uh, is there going to be like Dairy Fest this year, or Hub City Days, or the Civic Band concerts, or any of that good stuff? Well, that's a good question, Joanne, and, and the city has some involvement with the people who do those things, and yet they're really not our calls or our determination. For example, Hub City Days is run by the Main Street Marshfield Group. Uh, Dairy Fest is a, a Mackey, that's a Marshfield Area Chamber of Commerce and Industry event, and uh, the Civic Band Concerts, we provide some dollars to help them do that down in Columbia Park, but again, it's not our call. I think each one of those organizations is looking at what they can do now. It appears that we're finally starting to come out of the COVID situation. That's what I mean, yes, it's yeah. all nice. Yeah, I mean, certainly the, the number of vaccinations up and the number of cases down, it does lend itself to opening up a little bit. But e each one of those entities, I think, is, is really trying to figure out what they want to do for this year's events and whether or not they can hold them in a way that is going to be, a, you know, a health and safety success. Mm -hmm. I know I went to the um, uh, September 11th in Columbia Park, and I had a mask on, and there was numerous amount of people that didn't. And I didn't hear of anybody saying, God, that did get sick. But it was just beautiful. I attended a nice event, and I hope that, you know, it could continue like that. We were just like sardines in there, but <laughs> it was just beautiful. Thanks, Joanne. And one of the things that makes Marshfield a special place are, is a community events. The fact that you can come out and be part of a concert, to be part of a, an yep. activity like Dairy Fest. And, you know, mm -hmm. I'm really hopeful that as we get into the latter part of the spring and the summer, we can start seeing those resume, if not totally normally, at least as normal as possible, because we need that. We need to connect with one another. Yes. We've got to get out of this shelter that we're living in right now. It's been a rough year. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. well, yeah, thanks for the call. And thank you. Bye-bye. Take, take care. There we go. That will turn that off. Um, yeah, and, and on that subject, too, we wanted to, to kind of touch on this uh, topic a little bit because, you know, we have the Supreme Court now the other day, uh, what, repealing the governor's mask mm -hmm. mandate, even though it was set to, it, it expires, what, Monday anyway. Yeah, right. Um, so mask mandates, um, uh, things reopening, uh, how how are things regarding mask mandates and things of that nature in terms of city hall or city facilities or things like that? Can you give us an update? Yeah, you know, now again, um, the city 
through the council is uh, you know oversees money, many of the facilities in terms of daily operations. We have a library board, and they make decisions under state law about the operations of the library. Uh, Fire and police commission you know deals with those entities, and the Marshall Utilities Commission oversees that building. So when I talk about facilities reopening, I'm I'm talking mainly about the ones that I'm involved with making those decisions. And I talked to the council president after the state supreme court struck down the mask mandate, and I asked what he thought, and we kind of agreed that we'd bring it to the council on April 13th. Mm-hmm. Now, when COVID first broke, Mike, I, I asked for and was given, well, actually the mayor started the ball rolling with a proclamation, but I was given authority to make decisions about further restrictions. You know, would we close off entirely to the public? Would we, you know, all these kind of things. Well, now we're on the reverse side. We're looking at opening back up, but I, I really feel like the council needs to weigh in on this. So I'm putting this on the council agenda for April 13th, whether or not they would see fit to, uh, to you know, release the mask requirement uh, at City Hall and other facilities, um, and uh, we'll see what they think. I, you know, I know that even though we don't have the number of cases that we had before and more people are getting vaccinated every day, uh, I know that there's still a pandemic out there. And so we want to make sure that we're not being flippant about flipping the switch the other way. But as, as we said earlier, I, I think that uh, we are moving in the direction of opening up, and, and I think that's where we're headed in the coming weeks anyway. Okay. Um, and so City Hall is open? As we sit here right now, City Hall is open, and again, there is a, a mask expectation. Now, again, we know some people have um, medical reasons why they can't wear a mask, but we, we all City Hall employees are, are to wear them, mm-hmm. uh, visitors are to wear them, and, um, you know, in lieu of the Supreme Court's decision and the direction things are going, we're going to revisit whether we need to keep that in place. Okay. All right. But you, yeah, you can go there and get customer service you can walk into yes the the lobby there i guess or the office the front <laughs> i don't know what to yeah. call it but you know there was the lobby yep. and then kind of the next you know where you actually walk up to the the windows of the clerk or whoever that was closed for a while but now that's back that's back open it was and i really appreciate i think i've said this at a council meeting mike I really appreciate the the, the citizens being being kind to us and patient with us because that was kind of awkward like for tax payments a lot of people like to come in and pay their taxes in person be physically handed a receipt they can take home and use for their taxes and and we got people buying into the thought that we can't do that this year we have to do it differently we got a drop box we got mail in whatever you'll get your receipt you can use it for tax purposes and people seem pretty willing to work with us and i think the citizens of marshfield are, are, are really uh, receptive to what they needed to do, but it, it felt nice to reopen the the main lobby, if you will, that secondary lobby coming into the building for uh, citizen use. Mm-hmm. Okay. Anything on that topic before we move on? I don't think so. I, again, I, I echo what I said to Joanne a minute ago, though. You know, I'm not trying to get too far ahead of ourselves, but <laughs> boy, you know, and I know, <laughs> and the public knows. Yeah. That, I mean, think of all the things that we've had canceled in the past yeah. 12 months. You know, community activities, festivals, concerts. Uh, people are ready to, to start going back in that direction. Yeah, I, I, you know, when you see people here and there, or, you know, some people starting to come back, you know, into the studio or whatever for insight or whatever, and you see them and you go, oh, you're still around. You know, I haven't seen you. You haven't seen anybody for a year. That's kind of how it feels. Right. So, yep, you're right. And, of course, on the other side, you know, f- from me, people are going, oh, yeah. You know, yeah. The last year's been great. Now here you are. You know, I haven't had to deal with you. But no. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. uh, so, okay. N- uh, so the mask mandate will be discussed April thirteenth. Speaking of council meetings, yes. Um, there, you you had a, um, um, I don't know. I guess announcement or an update. I guess we'll call it at this last council meeting, this past Tuesday, right? What yep. was it? The thirtieth. Thirtieth. Yep. Um, and uh, regarding meetings on Facebook Live, um, and. Um, that was the first meeting since the council went in that direction that was not put on Correct. Facebook Live. Um, and uh, I know there was some concern raised about that. I think even at the meeting by a concerned citizen and by maybe a council member but and by yourself, you, you addressed it as well. Maybe just talk about uh, the issue of people were looking for that meeting on Facebook Live on Tuesday and could not find it, why they couldn't find it, and what's the issue? Yeah, and, and going back to 2019, this is what I tried to explain the other night. The council had several meetings, Mike, where they talked about using Facebook Live to get the word out to more people. And it's brought more viewers. I mean, truly, we have a lot of people on Facebook Live watching council meetings, and that's great. We want to use every platform that we can. But one of the things that came up as a theme in, in those discussions was that the council didn't want to see comments on 
you know, on the screen, so to speak, rolling through during the meeting. They wanted those comments to not be seen until after the meeting was over. Well, you know, one of the things that's been tossed to me later, wasn't that because the council back then uh, was using their own uh, tablets and their own phones during the meeting, and, and people didn't want the council to see, oh, you don't vote for this or don't vote for that right during the meeting. And that's true, that was part of it. But in general, if you watch the meetings, and I went back and looked at them, it's pretty clear that, that the mayor and members of the council didn't want comments on the screen during the actual meeting. So, you know, and that's what, what I thought we were doing. And, uh, you know, we have a good communications department. Tom Lauchs and, and David Bennett do a great job. But what I didn't realize until I was watching the mayor's hearing from my office when I wasn't testifying is that we really hadn't found a way to prevent that from happening. And there were comments scrolling throughout the entire hearing. Um, so when I talked to them, they said, well, what we normally do is, as they pop up, we hide them. And, you know, because during a normal council meeting, we don't get all that many comments historically. And, but they said that they were never able to find a way to actually prevent them from coming on the screen. So you have to manually hide them until later. And I felt that didn't meet the spirit of what we told the council was going to happen, that something would pop up and then somebody would see it and hide it. And what if we got several in a row and we couldn't keep up with them? And during the, the mayor's hearing, we got, I mean, there were literally hundreds, I think, right. pouring in. Yeah. So I, I said we needed to stop putting the meetings on Facebook Live until the council could have a discussion about that. Now, I think some people might have looked at that and thought that it was my reaction to the comments themselves, the content of the comments being uh, put up during the mayor's hearings. It wasn't. I don't care what the comments were about. I just looked at it and thought, I thought we prevented that. We told the council we wouldn't allow this to happen, and here it is. So I, I, I pulled the plug with the idea that we can plug it back in if the council decides they want to do this, but that wasn't the intent of their 2019 conversations. And quite frankly, as the, as the city attorney mentioned at the meeting the other night, he's got some concerns if we allow the, the comments to roll during the meetings themselves. He has a couple of questions he's got before we would even allow that again. So I want to tell the viewers or the, the people listening and watching right now that we're on, we're on uh, the website live all the time. You can go to city, the city's website and watch every meeting live. We're on channel 991 if you have a charter. And immediately after the meeting, we put the meeting on YouTube. So it's not like we're trying to cut off people seeing council meetings. Well, and I think, and I'm trying to remember back to the discussion, but the, the issue of hiding comments is, well, A, <laughs> council members didn't they kind of police themselves and they basically said we don't want your cell phone out during the meeting anyway so if it's out they're in direct violation of their own policy anyway right. so if they are seeing the comments they shouldn't be seeing the comments because they're not supposed to be on there anyway right so they're violating their own but but the other part about not uh, you know letting the comments get through during a meeting, isn't that some sort of, um, I don't want to say open records violation or something? What is the issue with council members being able to see comments as they come in? Because isn't that some sort of, isn't that a no-no? Yeah, it, it is. It is. And that's where the discussion is going to come up on the 13th about whether, you know, I acted correctly by working with the council president to stop that for the last meeting because there's people who are thinking, you know, that, that whole issue was settled a few months later when the council was told in a policy, a new policy, that they couldn't do that. They couldn't be looking at their phones during the meetings. They couldn't be looking at other things on their tablets besides the agenda packet. Didn't that settle it? But in looking back at, at the, the actual discussion, it's apparent that, yeah, that was part of it, but it's also that they, in, at least in my opinion, they seem to be saying we don't want comments on the, on the screen scrolling during the meetings themselves. Uh, and it, that makes sense because at that point, and I think this is what the city attorney is getting at, at that point you've kind of created an online forum. Now you have a few other issues that come into play with an online forum. And I don't think people think of it that way, but that's what it, what it could become. Well, because there is an agenda item called citizen comments. Correct. There is a time and a place for that type of thing. Once you move beyond that item on the agenda, aldermen are no longer supposed to be hearing or seeing or reading public comments of any kind. You're, you're beyond that part of the agenda, correct? True, correct. So if correct. they're sitting there reading comments on their phone after that agenda item has been passed, that has not been posted right. as part of the official agenda. You did not tell us that you were going to be taking public comments through the entire meeting on Facebook or on your phone or whatever. So now that True. becomes a direct violation of the open meetings law. True. 
right? True, true. Yeah, that could potentially be the case. Potentially. Yeah, yeah. No, that's okay. that's true. And and I think the other thing people should know too is we have a Facebook site, and you could be like you could be watching the meeting. I know this might sound awkward to people. You could be looking at the meeting on the city's website, and at the same time you could be communicating with others on Facebook. So you could be writing on Facebook while it's on. You know why why is the council talking about restricting access to city hall? And people could write back and say, yeah, I think it's a bad idea. But it's off of the actual meeting itself that's being yeah. broadcast. Right. It's not part of that, that record that we're creating of the, the, uh, of the actual meeting. Man, what a rabbit hole we've gone down here with all this technology. And it's supposed to be for good. And now it's, you know what I mean? There's so many questions about how to use it and why to use it and if we even should use it. Oh, and yeah. It is, I mean, it's, it's really <sighs> good. All these things we have with social media and, and everything, it's really positive. But it does create some questions that were never thought about when you talked about open meetings and open records and, and archiving and yeah. all those kind of things. We, we just got there too fast. You know, we did. Cities, cities, you know, weren't ready for... They didn't have this in place. They right. didn't say, because they didn't know how how it was going to be used or what the impact was going to be. How do you write a rule for something you don't know how it's yep. going to work? Yep. But I had literally no objective in contacting the council president and, and taking that meeting off Facebook Live than the one that what was going on appeared to violate what the council had okay. talked about. And I, I don't ever want to be accused of, of knowingly, once I know this, allowing something to happen that was different than what we told them. Yeah, that right. You're saying I removed, uh, I shut down the meeting because th this is not the spirit of what the council passed in 2019. Correct. Right. Correct. This, this is going off. This is going off in another direction, and you're not shutting it down. You're, you're shutting it down not because you don't like what they're saying. Right. You're shutting it down because this isn't what the intent of the law. Uh, was when the council approved it. Yeah, but yeah. A, okay. a big portion of my job, actually, Mike, is to do the council's bidding. Okay. And when the council votes for something and they make it clear, we want this done, but here's the concerns or the conditions we have in place. Now you have to enforce it. The last thing I want to do is, is get on their side where it's like, yeah, you let us pass this and then you don't you don't enforce it or you okay. don't follow up on it. Uh, that's not where I want to be. Right. Okay. All right, let's take a quick break, and uh, then we'll uh, throw some more stuff at you. Sounds good. All right, Steve Barg, our city administrator, with us on this first Friday of the month on Insight. Stick around. we got more coming up. Hello, folks. I'm Don Halloran, one of the photographers for this exhibit. The other photographer is... I'm Sylvia Eisenman, Don's wife, and... I became interested in photography because of Don. We started out using uh, SLR cameras. I advanced into digital, and he stuck to the uh, dark room and his old camera. There are two kinds of pictures here, one taken with an electronic camera and the other with a traditional film camera. Uh, I like the film part, mm -hmm. and I also like the developing in a dark room when you go into that dark room, you just sort of are transformed. There's, there's a neat odor that comes from the acid uh, fixer, and uh, it's, it's, just, it's just magical to be in there. program for a Friday, April 2nd, 2021, and Mike Warren with you this morning, and we are visiting with our city administrator, Steve Barg. This is a time set aside uh, for the mayor of Marshfield. We don't have one of those right now, so had to get somebody in here, and I thought, okay, I bet I can twist you know, Steve's arm and say, Steve, help me out here. Bail me out. I know a guy we can find, right? Yeah, I know a guy who, <laughs> who knows a guy who knows a guy. So, Steve, uh, thank you for coming in. Yeah, my pleasure. And uh, basically, it's, it's yeah, it's set aside for the mayor, but uh, generally city update mm -hmm. kind of stuff. So what's going on in the uh, city of Marshfield? I'm going to have you grab your uh, headphones oh. here. Oh and see if we can go back to the uh, phone lines. I think we got this before we move on to some other stuff here. Um, let me see if we got this working right. Good morning, you're on Insight. Yeah, hi, uh, can you hear me? 
Uh, yeah, Steve, you got him? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I guess I just had a comment. I, I just wanted to share my opinion of what's all going on with the mayor. I think uh, at this point they should hold a special election uh, and let the people decide if, uh, who should be the new mayor. And if Bob McManus wants to run again, he should run again. Because I think personally, I don't think he did anything to benefit himself personally. It ain't like he put money in his pocket or something. And he's the one who figured out that the payments weren't being made on the TIF district. Maybe there should be an investigation on uh, who was involved <clears throat> for not making the payments. And uh, what, what common council members, they didn't figure it out. He, it seemed like he figured it out. The former mayor didn't figure it out. Um, Bob McManus was the one who figured it out. Uh, city administrator didn't seem to figure it out. He's the one who knows what he's doing. The other comment I have is uh, the police and fire commission seemed like their comments were that he, they were perturbed because he was talking to police officers or firefighters on his own to make decisions. Well, uh, Bob McManus was smart enough to see that there was an opportunity to add on uh, additional firefighters or EMTs and have it paid for by doing an ambulance run for Marshall Clinic. He was the one who was smart enough to figure it out. It was a no-brainer. He was doing the right thing. That's my comment, and I think that uh, Bob McManus should run again and let the people decide. So I guess that's all I had to say. Thanks. Okay. Thanks for the call. Yep. Yep, yeah, thank, thank you. I appreciate your, your call. And there's a lot of questions there. I'm going to try and uh, unpack it as best I can. I, I apologize if I miss one of them. I want to start first with the tax increment financing piece. Uh, Bob McManus actually did not find or figure out, uh, you know, about the, the, the TIF district transfer payment thing. I, I know I've heard that said before, but actually, Ron Allman, our finance director, uh, was new on the scene back then, and he had some questions from what he was looking at. He, uh, he brought those to our financial advisor. Uh, they went through some of it and then approached me and said, look, I think we're, we're doing something wrong in terms of the transfer. Now, again, I want to remind people what we're hearing, you know, right now from me, and that is no monies are missing. There's no embezzlement or money's lost somewhere. It's simply a matter of the fact that the, the monies were being put in the wrong place. As a result, we were applying some of those funds to the annual budget in a way that we shouldn't have. So uh, I'm not trying to minimize what was wrong, but, it, you know, it's, it's something that we had to work through to get corrected. And no, to be honest with you, sir, the mayor didn't find this. Uh, he was brought into the process. I still remember the day that the finance director and I called him in and walked through it with him. And I think he was kind of horrified, as we were, to find out that the monies really were not exactly where they belonged and that we would have to kind of unravel that. With respect to what we do next, the council will have as one of its options to hold a special election. Uh, they will be presented with that as an alternative. Um, I've been told by the city clerk to expect it would pro probably cost around ten or $11,000 because we wouldn't be combining it, obviously, with another election that we could, you know, have other entities being part of paying for the what happens. Um, and it would probably take about 60 to 90 days, so we'd be looking at holding it sometime in the early summer, say June or maybe July. So that will be one of the options considered, along with just appointing somebody to fill out the term or letting the council president uh, do the limited duties until April of 2022. And uh, they'll go through all those, those options. Uh, I, I respect what you're saying. You know, uh, I, I don't... Yeah, I may have some disagreements with you on some of it, but uh, certainly, you know, your your opinions are important. Uh, I don't believe Bob McManus is actually eligible, though, to to run in that election that you're referring to. If we do have a special election, I think that's part of uh, under Chapter 17. I think he's barred from um, having his name in the hat for that one. Okay. All right. Thanks for the uh, call. And so we'll move on to some other uh, issues, Steve. Uh, as we wind down the uh, program here today. Um, gosh, what else is, <laughs> I'm afraid to ask. Well, okay, so the one, the one thing, well, maybe I'll just get a quick update on this, and not that you, there's a commission for this. Quick update on hiring for a police chief. Um, as we know, Rick Gramza resigned the position um, before there was supposed to be a series of hearings on that issue. There were going to be, I think, eight hearings. Yeah. Uh, you know, five hours apiece, 40 hours of testimony, um, and suddenly Rick Gramza resigned, and, and that, you know, did away with the need for those hearings. Um, so now what, um, in terms of um, maybe the police chief's position, which is also vacant in the city? 
Yeah, before I actually answer your question, I'd like to kind of finish up on that last part because I forgot the caller's last piece about the pipe police and fire commission. Yep. You know, it is true, if you're still listening, sir, that the, you know, the mayor was, was asking questions and raising concerns and issues regarding different police and fire issues, and that's his right as, as the, the, the mayor of this community. I think the police and fire commission in this community has special optional powers, it's called. Only about 10 cities across the state have that, where they really are the, the total authority over the operations and management of the police and fire departments. And so they, they had some concerns from time to time about whether he was you know, going beyond what he should be into their territory. So uh, I, I'm not saying that to, to you know, make a big statement against what you said in any way, shape, or form. I just wanted to clarify what everybody's roles are. With respect to the police chief, the, uh, we now have no police chief as we have no mayor. We have an acting police chief in, in Pat Zepps who's done a wonderful job, just an outstanding job for the city of, of guiding us through this tough time. But I, I, I don't want to presume what the commission will do. I assume they'll talk about it at their next meeting. I think they plan to talk about it at their next meeting. But I would look for a, a fairly significant uh, search, internal and external, looking for qualified candidates. Uh, this is a big decision, and, and you hope when you get somebody that they're going to be in that role for many years. So I, I would look for a fairly robust process that's probably going to take some time. Uh, that may irritate people who, who feel that we you know, should be on top of it sooner. I, th I know things don't always happen in the public sector as fast as people like. But again, when you talk about your chief of police, you're talking about one of the major positions in your community, and you certainly want to make sure that the process reflects that. Hmm. Okay. So we'll see what, what happens uh, there. Uh, and that meeting is usually early part of the month. It's, is that next week? Uh, I think it's, yeah, I think it might be the 13th. I think it oh. might be, uh, okay. no, the 14th, I'm sorry. Oftentimes it's the, the day after the council meeting, uh, the first council meeting of the month. So okay. I, I think it may be Wednesday the 14th okay. of April. Hmm. I'm All guessing. Right. Very good. Okay. Um, let's see. What else was I going to ask you about? Oh, and uh, speaking of fire and police, we have had a successful uh, run here at using the fire department to do COVID shots, right? That's been going well? They've done a wonderful job of partnering with Wood County and others to get that done. And, and you know, the number of vaccinations has really been rising. In fact, we've had recently where people have, uh, you know, for whatever reason, not shown up for saying that they were coming because they were able to get it somewhere else. But, uh, you know, we've had good good success. And, and it's been, there was a drive through one held the other day, and that went well. Uh, I applaud our fire department. This is a big part of public health and safety, and uh, they've done a great job. Yeah, they certainly have. Um, otherwise, maybe just a reminder, go to the city's website, you know, for updates, alerts, um, city meetings now, uh, things yeah. of that nature. Uh, that's really the first place people should go if they have questions or are looking for a resource or something. Is that correct? Yeah, even with social media and other things, we try to steer people to our website. That's where we have the most updated information about meetings, uh, issues being discussed, new announcements being made by the city. Whatever comes out of the discussion on the mask mandate will be posted there. And uh, I want to invite, if, if I could, Mike, anybody yeah. listening to this program who would like to learn more about any of the things we've talked about or anything else, to give me a call or send me an email. Uh, my phone number direct is 486 2003 and uh, my email address it's long but it's steve.barg at ci.marshfield.wi.us I'd be glad to talk offline with anybody about this what concerns questions uh, suggestions that they might have for us okay sounds good and don't forget to vote on Tuesday right we have uh, at least one race I think in the city correct we have uh, actually one race and kind of another race as well because I shouldn't say it that way but we have uh, a contested race in district 4 and we also have a, a registered write-in in, in District 10. I, I don't know all the, the intricacies about how that came about, but uh, both of those are, are contested races for council seats. On Tuesday. Otherwise, uh, there's really nothing else, is there? Uh, there's the, the DPI person at, oh, the yeah. sta at the state level. That's right. Um, but you know, oftentimes the spring election is fairly quiet. We still encourage people to use their, uh, their, their right to vote. It won't be like last year when we had, what, five? Oh, yeah. I think elections in the city of Marshfield in yeah. one year. Yeah, that was incredible. And, and it was such a zoo, especially with COVID. <laughs> Unprecedented. You used that word a lot last year, right? I know people are getting sick of hearing that word, but it literally was in terms of having five elections in one calendar year in the city of Marshfield simply because we had the special congressional we did. Uh, election and we had primaries and generals, you know, two of two of each there so yeah. that gives you five and and it's hard to believe you know we just had the big one back in November 
And now here yep. we are again, you know, back into election season. I kind of feel like at the Academy Awards, when, when <laughs> people are taking awards and they always say, I'm, I'm going to forget somebody. <laughs> I want to thank my dog and all that. But but, but seriously, I mean, in this last year, I, I, you know, I've, I've thanked a lot of people, uh, but I also want to thank our staff in general. Deb Hall does a great job with the clerk's office. They handled the elections so well. But so many departments, Mike, did a marvelous job during very difficult circumstances in the last 12 months. Certainly did. And, uh, yeah, so, um, and they've got a lot to deal with now. So hang in there, right? Will um, do. Steve, appreciate you coming on the Insight Program. And um, who knows, uh, you'll probably be back in the this time slot next month, I'm guessing, right? Sounds good. Okay, we'll see you then. Steve Barg, the City Administrator for the City of Marshfield on our Insight Program here this morning. Glad you were with us on AM 1450. These are archived eventually on our website, wdlbam.com. Just look for the audio archive uh, and then uh, go to the Insight folder. Give it about an hour or so and it will be there. Look for today's date if you're looking for today's show with our city administrator, Steve Barg, kind enough to join us on Insight here on a Friday morning on AM 1450, WDLB and WDLBAM.com. Your hometown radio station, AM 1450, WDLB Marshfield.